Wednesday. Welcome to Basis Juice presented by PointsBet Sportsbook. I'm the prop queen, Ariel Epstein, ready to give you some recaps from yesterday. Picks for today. It's getaway day, so the next segment will be all the picks from today's slate of games and some from the night slate. In case you're listening to this a little too late and you know that you actually do your job, we hope to get you at least a few picks later on, but there's a lot of day games today. Now, last night, it was great to see Mets right-hander Kodai Senga put on the best performance of his young Mets career. He's allowed one hit through seven innings, striking out nine. The Mets won 2-0 over the Phillies. The Mets were minus 135 on the money line. It was a high total of 8.5. I just can't believe that none of these Mets fans who work here at PointsBet told me that when the Mets introduced Senga at a news conference in December, he said he was looking forward to facing Philadelphia. Guys, that would have been great info to know yesterday when he shut him down, especially with Senga at home, 1-2-0 ERA and five starts. Big difference from his 6-1-2 ERA on the road. I mean, do you see that umpire view of the Senga ghost forkball? According to MLB Network people, it's like the best pitch in baseball right now. The movement's just nuts. The Mets are actually 14-0 this season when a starter completes at least six innings. I guess we know we can't trust the Mets' bullpen to go deep into games. Mets shortstop Francisco Lindor hit a solo shot to lead off the fourth, the only run that Phillies right-hander Ranger Suarez would allow in six and two-thirds. The Mets have now won six in a row at home. They're tied with the Marlins for second place of the NL East, four games behind the Atlanta Braves. Talk about playing down to your competition. The Braves have lost two straight to the worst team in baseball, the Oakland Athletics. Last night, the Braves lost 2-1 when Braves third baseman Austin Riley made a fielding error, and that allowed the ace left fielder Seth Brown to score for a walk-off. Five of Oakland's 12 wins this season have been in walk-off fashion. The A's five walk-offs are tied with the Yankees for most walk-off victories in baseball. Okay, Oakland, I guess you're down. You're never out. The Braves were minus 265 road favorites. I even saw that line move from minus 245 to minus 265 overnight. And that was because the A's are just that bad at back-to-back -back victories. This is a prime example of why you know nothing if you're betting and you're laying minus 265 in baseball. Wins are never guaranteed in this sport when you're playing every single day. By the way, the crowd in Oakland, 5,116. Ryan Leaf hasn't even performed in that little amount of people in 40 years. A recap of yesterday's plays. Cardinals right-hander Miles Michaelis went over 4.5 Ks. He matched a career high with 10 strikeouts, allowing three hits in a season-high eight shutout innings. The Cards beat the Royals 2-1 as a minus-190 home favorite. St. Louis third baseman Nolan Arenado hit an RBI double. Nolan Gorman hit a sack fly to split the two-game series. The other strikeout prop from yesterday was Astros right-hander Brandon Belak, who had over 4.5 strikeouts. He had six against the Twins, who have the highest strikeout rate in baseball against righties. Belak had a great outing, going five and two-thirds. He allowed three hits, giving Houston the 5-1 win as a short home dog at minus 105. It's the third time this season that the Astros were booked as a home dog. They're now 2-1 and one in those spots. In regards to underdogs, I'm just so proud the Pirates finally pulled out a win on a fishy line. They beat the Giants 2-1 as a plus-130 road dog. That line moved 20 cents against the Giants overnight, and that was despite being the public side. Pirates outfielder Connor Joe homered against the former, his former team, snapped the Pirates' five-game losing streak against the Giants. The Giants tied the game at one in the first, however, in the fifth. Uh, and, or excuse me, they tied the game in the first. Then in the fifth, Pittsburgh scored the go-ahead run on a wild pitch by Sean Manaya That allowed Rodolfo Castro to score. The key to this game. It was going to be the Pirates' right-hander, Johan Oviedo. He's either dominant or he's going to give up five runs in a game. He did do well yesterday. He went four and a third, allowed one run on three hits. The Giants were one for eight with runners in scoring position, leaving nine runners on base. Unfortunately for Pittsburgh, they did start the season 12 and eight, and now they've gone seven and 19 since. Time to bash my head in for some really, really terrible picks yesterday, like, um... Betting against my Yankees again like an idiot. All the trends in the line movement pointed in the direction of the Mariners. Went from minus 135 to minus 145 home favorites in Seattle. Despite that, like all the money coming in on the Yankees, of course, to the public side always. My friend Ralph Michaels out in Las Vegas. He even posted a trend in favor of Seattle. A back-to-back -back game scoring 10 or more runs like the Yankees did going into last night's game. Then you're booked as an underdog. Those teams since 2017, 18 and 38 straight up. They're also hitting the over at 58.5%, which I guess was probably the right side since the Yankees upset the Mariners 10-2 going over their total of 7. 
Yankees MVP Aaron Judge hit his 18th home run of the season. Now he's two behind Mets first baseman Pete Alonso. Remember, Judge was on the 10-day IL, so just saying. Yankees left fielder Isaiah kiner falefa went four for five with four RBI. There was a moment in this game I did feel bad, felt bad for Seattle. Mariners catcher Tom Murphy was ejected by home plate umpire Brian Walsh in the sixth inning after yelling toward first base umpire C.B. Buckner following a check swing that was called a strikeout, or, or excuse me, called a strike. Let me tell you, Murphy did not go. It wasn't even close. He didn't even set. I, I, we'll have, we have this video. It was horrible. And then you toss the team's catcher because he was right? I mean, I wasn't the first advocate for replay in baseball. However, this situation was just absolutely terrible, and it completely showed you why you game. need to be able to give the managers a potential option to replay this. At least once in the game, oh, allow for a manager it. to tell the home plate umpire he's yeah, wrong. He check this check Buster swing was the most basic of check swings, and the around. fact that you think that Murphy went Swings. was just around, ridiculous. No, he he so now Murphy is tossed from the game, and you have to put in Cal Raleigh at catcher, which if Cal Raleigh, God forbid, gets hurt in the sixth inning, now what do they do? This was just horrible baseball. It was a horrible, man it was a horrible call, and it wasn't the only bad call that the, the umps had in this game. Later on, there was a fly ball to Julio Rodriguez, which they said was a catch, and uh, it wasn't clearly hits the ground at least replay showed that one so the Mariners have now dropped two in a row to the Yankees seven and a half games back of the Rangers in the AL West the Yankees are five games behind the Rays and third of the AL East there's a missing piece of the Yankees outfielder Aaron Hicks sayonara he's gone the Orioles took him uh, the Yankees dropped him like a few days ago he was hitting 188 Baltimore picked up Hicks after placing outfielder Cedric Mullins on the 10-day IL yesterday with a strain rank growing. Some people just can't hang in New York. Can't handle it. Joey Gallo, Randy Johnson, Kenny Lofton, A.J. Burnett. The list goes on and on. It's not your fault, Hicks. You just can't hang with us New York big boys here. So uh, maybe some young talent in Baltimore will take the pressure off you and reinvigorate you to hit maybe 200 instead of 188. You win some, you lose some. And yesterday... I lost some betting on Hicks' new team, the Orioles, who beat the Guardians 8-5 to as minus 140 home favorites. The Orioles jumped out to a seven-run lead in the second inning, and that was after Orioles right fielder Anthony Sandair, uh, Santander hit a bases-clearing triple in Baltimore's five-run second inning. Orioles closer Felix Bautista picked up his 14th save in 18 chances. Now, the last L of yesterday, the over eight runs in Rays Cubs, final score 2-1 Cubs, not even close. The teams combined for three for 17 with runners in scoring position. Whatever. Wash that one under the rug. Coming up next, Redemption. Picks for this afternoon and tonight here on Basic Juice, presented by Points Bet Sportsbook. Welcome back to Basis Juice presented by Points Bet Sportsbook. Let's start with some afternoon action. 1 10 p.m. Eastern Time. I need something to watch while I work, so let's bet Rangers run line minus one and a half at plus 105 on the road at the Detroit Tigers. Texas has won 17 of its last 26 games, outscoring opponents 149 to 85 in that span. The Rangers have the highest OPS in the day, Tigers second worst in the daytime. Rangers right-hander Dane Dunning is 2-0 with a 159 ERA and four starts this month. He's using his cutter more. Opponents are hitting just 115 against it this season. Now, Dunning was brought in to start uh, when Jacob deGrom went to the IL. However, the ace for the Rangers is expected to move back into the rotation following his fifth bullpen session today. Probably not going to make any kind of start before then. He's going to come right back into the rotation, which means that Dunning may know this is his final chance to shine. Oh, and he just had a son on Friday. Tigers lefty Joey Wentz is expected to start. He's got a 7.80 ERA, which is second worst in the majors amongst pitchers with at least 40 innings pitched. Wentz would have probably been optioned if the Tigers' rotation wasn't so banged up. The Rangers are also one of the best lineups in baseball against lefties, which is what Wentz is. Rangers are in line to start our day. 2.10 p.m. Eastern time, a strikeout prop. Rays righty Zach Eflin over 5.5 Ks. Eflin's faced the A's and the Yankees this year. Two teams averaging just over five strikeouts a game against righty starters. The Cubs have the sixth highest K rate against right-handers this year, with 58% of righty starters going over their K prop against Chicago. Eflin over 5.5 Ks in a must-win game for the Rays to avoid their first sweep of the season. 
I mean, if anyone's going to avoid a sweep, it better be the Rays' highest paid pitcher ever in free agency history in Tampa. Another strikeout prop this one, 3.45 p.m. Eastern. Giants lefty Alex Wood, under five and a half strikeouts. Not four and a half. I've seen a drop. Five and a half for the under on Wood. He hasn't had six strikeouts yet this season. Pittsburgh owns the seventh lowest K rate against lefties, averaging just over four strikeouts per game against lefty starters. Take that under at five and a half Ks for Wood. 4.10 p.m. Eastern time. Nationals and Dodgers. This one's a fishy line with the line moving 10 cents against the Dodgers overnight. The Dodgers are getting 85% of bets, 64% of money. I'm just too nervous to bet against LA at home, so I'm riding the over of nine and a half runs. It's a high total, and the weather shows a 9% increase in home runs. Washington Southpaw Patrick Corbin is up against Angels right hander Noah Syndergaard. Both pitchers have some of the highest ERAs in the National League. The frustration showing with Syndergaard, who said, quote, just not a lot of positive emotion right now when thinking about pitching. It's just hard to go out there with weapons you used to kind of have being taken away from you, end quote. Syndergaard's hard hit rate of just under 40%, highest of his career in a full season. The velocity is down about two miles an hour on his fastball, plus both bullpens are bottom 10 in ERA, over nine and a half runs in this messy day game. The night slate, I like the first five over, five and a half runs in the Brewers-Blue Jays game. I don't trust the Jays' right-hander Alec Manoa at all, who has an ERA of a 5.53 this year, sixth highest in the American League. Opponents are hitting 314 against Manoa's slider. Toronto's lineup is starting to hit, especially the bottom of the lineup. It includes Whit Merrifield, Alejandro Kirk, Kevin Biggio. They're all hitting 400 in the last couple of weeks. Brewers right-hander Julio Tehran, 7.66 ERA in five career starts against Toronto. Tehran was signed last Thursday because the Brewers, their rotation is banged up. Brandon Woodruff, Wade Miley, Aaron Ashby, Eric Lauer. Tehran is a plug until they get their pitchers back healthy, and then he's dropped. He's not good enough to be in this rotation. The Jays should get to him. First five over, five and a half runs. Another strikeout prop for the night slate. Reds right-hander Luke Weaver over three and a half strikeouts around minus 140 range in Boston tonight. Weaver has had at least four strikeouts in five of seven starts. Although the Red Sox have the sixth lowest K rate against righties, they've been striking out a lot more recently with at least four Ks in nine of their last 10 games against righty starters. I don't know if the three and a half is still around. If it is in that minus 140 range, it's a great deal. Get that over. I usually don't like hitter props yet. I said this to the guys this morning. You can't pass on Polar Bear tonight. 7.10 p.m. Eastern time, the Mets first baseman, Pete Alonso, gets Phillies right-hander Aaron Nola. Alonso's hitting 349 with three doubles and five home runs against Nola. Also on the Mets, Star- uh, Starling Marte. He's got great numbers hitting 375 with a home run and two doubles against Nola. Other side of this game, Philly shortstop Trey Turner, 6 for 8 with three doubles against Carlos Carrasco. Lastly, Dodgers infielder Miguel Rojas. He's hitting 429, batting uh, with three home runs against Patrick Corbin. Go and look to any of these kinds of offensive player props that back the numbers for any of those players for hitter pitcher matchups. That's it for us here on Basis Juice, presented by Points Bet Sportsbook. I'm the Prop Queen, Ariel Epstein. We'll see you on Friday. 